And welcome back. We are at the NAB convention. We are at the WYSICOM booth. We're here with Jeff. We're going to go over some of the new products here. So, Jeff, run us through some of the new transmitters I'm seeing here on the table. Oh, we're so excited to finally, you know, we've been talking about the MTP61 for what feels like a long time now, and we're, we're really right at the finish line of being able to put this into your hands. Uh, so this is the brand new MTP61. This is the companion transmitter to the MTP60. Uh, the MTP60 has been a great transmitter and it still remains a great transmitter. We just know that, you know, listening to a lot of the feedback of, of our users and, and those out in the field that we needed to come up with a transmitter that was a different form factor to fit, you know, reality, film, television, scripted, all of these different applications where you need to be able to hide this. Fits in the palm of your hand. So, and then rechargeable battery I see here. Yeah, so the, the MTP61 is based off a non-proprietary lithium rechargeable battery. So you can push this button right on the back, and it'll pop open, and you can quickly pop it out. And this is water gaskets here for the seal? It's funny you mention it. That's uh, we, we were waiting until we could finish some of the reworks on the connectors, but the MTP61 is going to be uh, IP58 rated. Okay, excellent. Uh, so Stand for anyone for not there, bit. you can get it wet. Uh, you know, it's not submergible for too long, but sure. you know, you're <laughs> not you going to get. If you drop it in the toilet, it's, hopefully it's not done. Hopefully beforehand, <laughs> right? If yeah, you have to. <laughs> absolutely. But uh, yeah, so we've got this uh, charger option. So this is the the new lithium charger. So you can get four MTP 61s charging on the top with four spare batteries. So then, I'm seeing something that looks very Apple esque here, and I'm, I'm I'm an Apple guy. I appreciate what's going on. Can you expand on this connector? Uh, yeah, so this is a magnetic connector. It's not the one you're thinking of, but it is a magnetic connector. Uh, five pin, so it's got the magnetic built into the base and to the bottom of the MTP61. This will allow you to charge it with the cable as well as collect the data from the embedded recorder on the device. Wow, okay, so uh, I could pull directly from the card via USB from this connection. Correct, because the card is a, it's an industrial uh, micro SD card, so it's embedded in the device. Excellent. The card is not removable. Oh, I see. So internal. Very lovely. So you can use that, or uh, we have a cable that is somewhere in our booth. I apologize, it's not right here. No worries. Um, that will come, the, there'll be a small USB t cable that comes with it. Ah, uh, okay. Um, cable. We're going to get this cable. We're going to find the cable. Yeah. Um, and then, so let's talk about the back so, while we're waiting on this cable here. Yeah. So the back, we've got a few things. I'll unplug this. Um, so what you get on the back is uh, power to charge all of your devices, as well as USB, which will let you collect all of the data from your recording. So when you have four of these popped in, you can connect to all of them via your PC and get the recording data off, as well as connect via network to see the status of your chargers and MTPs in WYSICOM Manager. Okay, so I just run Cat5 into my, um, my PoE switch, and then I can see everything populated there. Yep, and if that's not enough, you can also plug in the uh, quarter-inch, or excuse me, eighth-inch uh, linear time code from your favorite uh, time, you know, code, time to code device, like a tentacle. Okay, so we've got a tentacle on play. This would just go into the port here. The linear eight. time code, yep. And then when you, when you plug in your MTP61, as soon as you click it in, it jams. So throughout your day, no matter what's going on, you'll always be able to keep time code going. All right, so then we've got Cat5 connection, we've got time code connection, we've got power. What else does this charger do? That's the, the, the bulk of it. We've got a little button on the front. Okay. That is, because uh, this is a, really a mechanical model, but this will let you press the button and see the status of all your MTPs. So every time you plug one in, you'll see your battery level, see your, your info going on. Nice. And then um, when this releases, the indicator lights will be here as well? Yep. So you'll get status of your status of your charging batteries and of your MP, MTP61s. All right. Excellent. Can I show you a feature that uh, is going to come in a femur that I'm not supposed to show you guys? So everyone's familiar with our MTP60. And when you run the recording, obviously we want to jam time code into this. So what we've done is working with the, the tentacle protocol, you can go into your MTP60 in a future firmware. This is not released yet. Okay. This is coming in a future firmware. I promise we will announce to you and to everyone in the world as soon as we have this public. All right, understood. So you can go into your recorder settings, into your time code setup, and change from wire over to tentacle. And I've already synced this to my phone. 
Not that there's any other devices, but then you just take it and set it near it and turn on your jam and it will jam. Oh, magic. And That's it's wireless. That's pretty impressive. So we were basically jamming Bluetooth now over Bluetooth protocol. Yeah. So if you need to quickly rejam while it's on one of your, your talent, you can just walk up and eventually through the app, tell it to jam. You'll be able to do that. And you can do it via wireless. Excellent. So then Tentacle is the only supported time code box for at right this now, time? Yeah. We're just working with Tentacle so okay. far. Um, there may be more to come, but for now we want to get this get this right and get Rock this solid. working for yeah, everyone. Yeah, assumingly so. Um, okay, that's that's pretty awesome. And then uh, the battery eliminator for the transmitter as well? Yeah, yeah this is, uh, I think we've been on shipping this recently, so you can just pop this right in with one of our, lith uh, the NPR LBP lithium rechargeable batteries. Okay. Put that in there, plug it in, you'll have a easy thing we were talking beforehand to be able to take and remote your, your hop or IFB transmitter right. up above your cart, you know, just send audio and power. Excellent. Yeah, that's a request that I kind of get pretty frequently for Wizicom users. Um, they're wanting to limo out of that into an antenna and remote that transmitter so they can calm to the rest of their crew. Yeah. So, yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, beautiful solution there. I appreciate that. Um, so then RF over fiber, uh, next one. Yeah. So this is the BFL we've been talking about for a bit. This is, you know, we, we took and uh, now that it's in the final mechanical model, we switch it to a magnesium alloy, so it's it's got a little bit more weight, it's got a little bit more durability to put it out in the field. So you can very quickly from whether you're running a cart or just a you know a little bit of bigger bag situation, you can add a antenna zone anywhere you need or move your IFB very easily large distances. Right. And then you guys you guys changed the finish on this. We did, um, yeah. That's part of moving to the magnesium alloy just to make it a little a little easier to produce in, in bulk because we know there's you know, there's a lot of component shortages and shortages, uh, not just components, but all the processes along the way. Right, yeah. So this step. lets us get a mold that we can produce uh, much quicker. Okay, yeah, well, that's beautiful. Um, any estimate time on the release of any of these things? Any? The, the MTP61s are, are finishing up their process of going through what we call type acceptance, which is getting their FCC certifications. Copy, all right. Um, and then these are starting in production. Uh, if they've not already started in the last couple weeks, they are over the next couple weeks. Okay, excellent. And, uh, this is that cable we were talking about. Oh, yes. That'll include with it so you can hey, mag slick. connect. And I don't know, here, we'll give you a little bit of Foley or a little yeah. bit of There's uh, a degree ASMR, of satisfaction depending to on that. where you are in the world. <laughs> or, or TK, a little bit of uh, ASMR for those at home. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, that's great. So um, this is wonderful. I'm really impressed with the Bluetooth over uh, time code over Bluetooth. Um, I think a lot of technical users will be happy to unite that with their current Wizicom wireless. And then you guys have a replacement for the IFB transmitter as well? Yeah, uh, yeah we can take upgrade. over and, and, and quickly look at this. Yeah. So this is the, the MTK982. It's a, it's a very direct replacement to the 952, which has been a very popular IEM and IFB solution that has started rolling out to some of our, our cart users uh, around, the, around the country and around the world. We. We looked at the platform and you know the, the level of component shortages around the world and said, well, let's take it, let's make it a little more energy efficient, let's, let's improve the amplifiers, and let's rebuild it with components that are much more available. Excellent. So just a, a remap to make it essentially available to end users sooner. Yeah. So we, we, you know, we, more than anything, we want, to, we want to keep all of our production levels very high. Our quality is exactly where you want it to be. But... We want to get this in your hands, and we want to get all of our products to you as quickly as we can. Excellent. We have Kendra on the line. Uh, there is anything. Kind yes, of we do have a few questions from our audience. Uh, Kyle Sherling from YouTube was asking what the transfer speed of the dock is. The 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 dock is USB 3.2. Um, so that should be. I apologize. I don't know the exact spec. This every time I talk to Kyle when I go to Texas, he's always got me on one of these. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we joke here, we say everyone's playing stump the sales guy, and uh, but it, it's USB 3, so that there'll be no limitation there on speed. Um. All right, great. And then we've also got a couple questions, uh, one from Facebook and uh, one from YouTube asking about the battery run times on that MTP61. Yeah. Right now we're looking at uh, about a 10-hour battery life on the MTP61. At what milliwatt? Uh, we're looking right now, at, uh, looking at about uh, for, I think twenty was what they said for for 
10 hours. What about 100? Do you have figures for that? Uh, oh, that's actually an excellent one that I didn't even mention. The, the MTP61, initially we, we thought we'd only be able to get it to 50 milliwatts, but we're going to be able to have that run at 100 milliwatts, and you should be running at about uh, 8 hours for that. Oh. Uh, what's the next question, though? Well, we've got a question coming from uh, Mark Berry on Facebook asking uh, if the cable is the only way to get media off the MTP61, is there an option for USB-C? Uh, the, the, cable, the cable is the option. It's either plug in the, the magnetic cable or plug it in via the dock, uh, the, the charger dock. That is USB-C on the charger dock, but the cable right now, uh, we just have it as the, the USB. I think it's the Type B. US, okay, yeah. The, uh, type B. Is there any plans for a USB C version of that same cable? Uh, it's something we're looking at. Okay. It's something we could definitely look to see, you know, the, the supplier of, of getting that as a USB C version. Yeah, I think the end user would yeah. appreciate that. Uh, any uh, other questions? Kyle Sherling's got another question for you uh, asking about battery recommendations for the MTP61. Uh, the battery recommendation would be our, uh, the part number I believe should be uh, LBP61. It's available through Gotham. Oh, sorry. Um, LBP61. Um, we've got these, uh, if they're not on our, our shelf in, in Chantilly, Virginia, and the one in uh, Italy, uh, they should be arriving very soon. Because uh, it is a non proprietary battery type, but they, they, there are some versions out there that are less than the quality that we okay. look at from so our. So you would our recommend using WYSICOM batteries? We, we'd only recommend our battery. Copy that. I, that's an easy one, Kyle. Uh, we're also getting a question about is RF over fiber unit only functional with WYSICOM modulations? No, the RF over fiber you can, for, for using it as a microphone receiver uh, extension, you can use it with any, any wireless. Uh, the only thing you want to keep in mind is if you're using uh, digital modulating wireless to be cautious on, on overlapping zones of coverage. Because uh, you can you can cause some loss of uh, QoS um, for all the RF nerds, we can right, dive yeah. way we get a little nitty gritty later, there. <laughs> ultimately, yes, it'll pass anything. Okay, do you uh, have any other questions? Oh yeah, they're they're still coming in. We've got <laughs> some people looking towards the future. One person wondering about back order dates for the NPR fifty two ENG. So the 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 dates itself, I, I would leave to talk to your your salesperson at Gotham. Sorry, guys. Uh, I, I'm more on the, the product support side of that. But um, to, to, to be honest with that, we, we paused production on the MPR-52 and the MPR-51 in order to keep the, the... We needed to use some of those components to support the MCR-54 and our, our MPR-50 IEM uh, body packs. So we are in the process of redesigning those with components that are a little more uh, readily sourceable. Um, so as soon as we have that, we will, we will make sure that's communicated out. Great. And then we've also got one person wondering about um, exchange programs, rebates, uh, if people are interested in upgrading, uh, are, what are you guys, uh, are, are you guys incentivizing that at all? Uh, directly with Wizicom, we, we don't have any on the roadmap that I'm aware of. Um, it's something that it, it would be to talk with your talk with your, your salesperson uh, if that's something they're looking at, but I, I wouldn't want to speak for Gotham or any of our other resellers uh, in the U.S. or anywhere in the world, but it's, it's not something we're looking at at the moment. And then we've got an app question. Kyle was wondering if we've got any new features coming to the WYSICOM app. Uh, we're always working on the app and always interested to hear from our users, you know, what, what features you would, you would like to have, you know, coming in the app. I know uh, immediately we're working on getting the app for the, the Bluetooth time code to get it to be able to remotely trigger the jam from the app so you can, on your phone, start the process by holding the, the tentacle near to the person so you don't have to touch it physically. So that way you can jam multiple MTPs at one time. All right. Do we have any more questions? You know, the, the only question I've got left is one from a, a beautiful lady named Katie who's <laughs> asking if the WYSICOM rep is single. Um, the joke. Sorry. <laughs> I feel funny. like I need to context this. TK <laughs> is laughing because he already knows what this is. That's my wife. Uh, also, we're in Vegas. The name of my wife. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's one of our wives. And no. Uh, 
<laughs> Hopefully that's Hopefully yours, right? <laughs> it's definitely Jeff's wife. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, check that IP. Yeah. All right, well, if there are no further questions, uh, we, we would like to... We had need one to make more some announcements okay. today, TK. Yeah. <laughs> you okay? No, no, I think we're good. <laughs> I mean, I'll say if no one else has, congratulations on two children. I feel like one of them is younger and, and more recent. This, this is true, yes. Uh, um. TK stands for two kids. Let, let that be known <laughs> to the world. Um, and then I believe there's one further question. Yes, we did. Uh, will time code be able to be sent through the SL2 to the MCR54 and then on to an MTP60, or or will the app be able to sync those receiver transmitter settings in the future? Oh, that I'm gonna have to go back to go back to R and D on that one um, uh, about passing it through. Um, let me. I, let me. I would say based on current stuff. Anytime you plug in a receiver module into another a third party device, it loses the proprietary devices um, capabilities and features. I know that's kind of been a thing. Um, manufacturers, I'm sure, are working on collaboration to address those issues, but not at this time. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we have a yeah. We, we, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, if there are no further questions, then uh, we'll just take this time to thank you, Jeff at Wizicom, and uh, yeah, make sure to. Check out our schedule. We have a bunch of interviews coming up further throughout the day, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.